Today on the EV Show, we have a 1968 Porsche 911 and we put a Tesla drivetrain in it. Let's take a closer look. All right, so here it is in all its Irish green glory. Uh, you've probably seen this car on the internet. This recently got awarded to uh, a lucky individual through Omaze. It's an online raffle and they give away some of the proceeds to charity. And uh, this car's already been awarded out and we're just finishing up before it gets delivered to the customer. And we thought this would be a great opportunity to show some of the finer details and answer a lot of the common questions about our current Tesla system for the Porsche platform. If you've been following EV West for a while, you'd probably seen this car before. It was through our shop about a year ago, but it was actually wrapped in a primer gray, like a matte Nardo gray. And so uh, thankfully the new owner went out and we got it painted uh, Irish, Irish green, I believe is the actual color. And it looks so much better. We absolutely love the green paint on it, but um, you'll probably see in some of the B-roll, uh, a gray Porsche, it's the same car. We're not trying to trick you. The car just got painted through the conversion process. So we have the rear engine bay all opened up for you. The deck lid's taken off and we actually have the lid to our integrated contactor box here uh, all taken off. Now the customer normally has a panel that goes through the whole floor here. So they actually have a trunk, like an actual trunk that you can put stuff in and it's separated from the motor and the battery system. Um, we've removed all that so that we could show some of the components that we put in the car. Okay, so we're back here at the drive unit and we have the lid removed to the contactor box that's integrated into the battery enclosure. And just going over the components real quick, we have the pre-charge circuitry over here. There's our resistor and our pre-charge relay. We've got our two main contactors and then our high voltage, low current fuses our BMS system, and this sits on top of our parallel boards down here. And over here, we've got some contactors for the heating system and, uh, and then just some 12 volt relays over there for the charging system. So everything's really tidy. And by sitting on top of the battery box, it keeps the connections really short. And also our BMS is integrated into the box, which is basically what factory cars do. So it's not an offboard BMS, it's integrated into the battery pack. So this gives you an idea of the box, the cutoff switch. We've got our quick connectors over here. And this whole entire enclosure sits on a subframe that contains the Model S motor and our shaft adapters and all that. And the uh, entire apparatus bolts in through the factory mount. So this will go straight into your transmission mounts for your 915 or your G50 tranny and then the rear engine mounts. And we actually have both versions of this box, the 912 that has the mounts a little bit further forward and the 911 with the mounts back here in the corner like this one. All right, so here we are in the interior. Pretty plain and simple. All we really did was add our EV controls display down here. And uh, this gives us all the information we need to know. We have our volts, our amps, our temperatures of the drive unit and associated inverter and boards. And we've got uh, drive select. So if we wanna change gears, we can do it right through there. It didn't do it because there's a safety for the brake pedal, but uh, it makes all of the information in one spot and we don't have to mess with any of the factory configuration of the dash. All right, well, here we are under the front hood and uh, the customer brought the car in with a lot of the Ren line, kind of Ren Sport looking stuff. And so we wanted to carry along with that design aesthetic. So our cover plate up here, we perforated to match the original Ren line uh, smuggler's box cover back there. And then what we did is we went ahead and trimmed this around our box that mounts into the factory gas tank location. So we grabbed those points because uh, they're designed to hold the weight and it also keeps the integrity in the car and keeps the look nice and clean. In front of the battery box, we have two two and a half kilowatt chargers. So we have five kilowatt onboard charging. And we've got a 1500 watt DC converter over there. 
So as you can see, there's not a lot of components and there's not a lot of complexity in the system and that's by design. We wanted to keep the system simple and clean, much like the car itself and lightweight. And that required a lot of this kind of designing things to do more than one task. So if you look at our rear subframe, it's also our battery box and also our contactor box. And so a lot of things are doing dual purpose in the car and that keeps the overall design aesthetic really much, you know, pretty much in line with the original Porsche. So um, we're gonna take a little bit closer look at the subframe outside of the car and then we'll put the car on the lift to give you an idea of how we integrate that into the Porsche. All right, so here we are at the rear subframe. We're lucky because uh, we have one being assembled for another customer right now. And you can kind of see the contactor box without the lid on it. You can see the parallel boards in here for the BMS. What those do is they actually allow you to hook more than one battery module in parallel and still independently monitor each cell on our BMS. Very important. So we have those in here and we're sitting on 16 kilowatt hour of LG Chem battery. There's another 16 in the front. So the car has 32 kilowatt hour battery combined. And uh, of course you can kind of see there's some wiring that still needs to be done here, but it gives a really good idea of how this is assembled. You can see it sitting on top of the battery here with a, a component plate installed on top of that and then with a gasket and a sealed lid that goes on top so it keeps it uh, free from you know, ingress from the elements. So then over on this end, we've got our front and rear motor mounts for the Tesla drive unit. And there's actually a third mount that goes off to the side over there. These are the factory transmission mounts here. And this one, uh, because of the location here, I can tell you it's going in a 912 instead of a 911. You know, one of the neat things about this kit is the, the, we hear this from our customers all the time. The most difficult thing for customers in DIY is doing the battery box and the battery VMS. It's really critical that that gets done right. So by uh, offering a pre-assembled shell with all the BMS wiring done, that really just jumps that huge step. I mean, some customers will spend months on this process. And with a kit like this, this whole entire subframe, uh, we've bolted them in the car, and, and I'm not exaggerating, like, you know, 15, 20 minutes. We even had a, a Mike Brewer from Mike Brewer's Cars on a TV show come in and actually do one for us on camera. And it almost looks like it's staged because it goes so quickly, but uh, it's not. What you see is what you get here. So. Sorry. So you can see in this arrangement here, we've got six of the LG Kim 60 volt battery modules. We're arranged two in parallel, three in series. So we have a 200 volt pack in the rear, a 200 volt pack in the front. We series them together and that's how we get the 400 volts to the drive unit. All right, so we want to take a moment to get the car on the lift to show you the underside. And from back here, you can see the end of our battery enclosure. This is the tail end of the subframe that we put in here. And this is all one plate here, the little diffuser panel that holds the Tesla motor. And then up in here, we have our drive shaft flange adapters. We have a standard 930 CV um, half shaft in there with our CVs. So what we manufacture is a flange for the Tesla motor and it allows a 930 CV to bolt right onto it. So we can actually put factory axles in here. So it really goes a long way. You can see we've got a lot of miles on this. You'll see a lot of road dirt and whatnot under here. Um, but it gives you an idea of how well this drive system sits in here and how it integrates into the factory axles. Um, so there's really just the four mount points and this whole subframe will drop down. You disconnect the axles and the quick connects and then the whole drive unit can be pulled away from the vehicle and it goes in just about as fast. Other than that, there's not a lot to see under here. It's a standard Porsche pan-based car all the way forward and uh, you know, rear engine, everything's in the rear here, but just wanted to give you an idea what it looks like. All right, so we got, uh, we look, took a look at the rear, we took a look at the front and the battery box and subframe, we had it up on the lift. And so now uh, we're gonna go take it for a drive. That's definitely what we wanna do. It's a great day for a drive and uh, these cars are just incredibly fast. We sold one of these kits to uh, BC Moto and he's one of the first that we know of that put like a draggy, you know, some sort of measuring device on it. And he's getting a 2.06, zero to 60. Now you can tell this has a more uh, era appropriate tire on it. We're not going to get any kind of speed like that out of it or acceleration just because of grip. Um, and uh, it's not wide bodied or anything like that, but it's uh, suffice to say that the 400 kilowatt Tesla drive has more than enough horsepower for the Porsche. The Porsche is sitting at about 2,450 pounds right now, post conversion, about 45% of that's up front, about 55% in the rear. So we preserved a little bit of that rear, rear bias there. And it actually helps the car hook up a little bit better. So we like it. Um, but let's go take it out on the road. Let's go have some fun.
Being a 1968, this is known as what they call an SWB, or short wheelbase Porsche. It's got a wheelbase that's a little bit shorter. In 1969, they went ahead and extended it a bit, but it makes this car a little bit more lively in the turn, so you gotta be careful, especially with all that torque back there. 400 kilowatt in a tiny 2,400 pound Porsche, something you should be very careful with. <laughs> Saying that from experience. <laughs> so ultimately, at the end of the day, you end up with a car that's really fun to drive. If you've got a lot of time in a Tesla or ever driven one, you'll know you can really feel that 5,000 pounds. And so it's so fun to have the same power as that car, put all of that into a car about half the weight, and you get something that's really lively and it just kind of goes through the twisties. It really drives the way it's supposed to drive. And you don't have all that weight and all that body roll that you have in the Tesla. So it's just an absolute blast. Porsche plus Tesla equals SLCS, sudden loss of camera syndrome. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us on another episode of the EV show. I had a ton of fun today driving the Porsche, just having fun showing you guys the car. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next episode.